the next speaker and his name is Mr. Thomas Gachi. And Thomas, again, I hope I've pronounced your surname correctly. Thomas is the COO of Resolution Insurance, and he will be speaking on digitization of insurance and its influence on payments ecosystem. So Thomas, if you are ready to go, you can unmute yourself and take over. But welcome, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to participate. Thank you, and uh, uh, my, just as it has been said, my name is Thomas Gashie from uh, Resolution Insurance Kenya. We are a general insurance company, and uh, we provide both medical and the general medical general insurance products. And uh, with uh, with 76% uh, of our portfolio being medical, and uh, 24 being the non-medical, which is the motto and the non-motto. So I'll take you through the, the landscape of the Kenyan insurance industry. And uh, if you look at the insurance is part of the financial systems uh, and it plays a critical role in the financial intermediation and what it does, it provides value transformation, uh, pooling of funds, because we do collect uh, premiums, funds from customers through premiums. We provide transformation maturity, uh, maturity of transformation through the payments of claims, because you will pay premium with an expectation of uh, having a claim paid on time. And with that, what we've done is that We've, we are able to manage how we track, how, how we manage our the abilities so that we can pay the claims on time. Also, you'll find insurance provides reduction in transaction cost through economies of scale. And this is what you'll find that has con is contributing towards the transformation within insurance industry. And at the same time, how service is delivered. It provides the risk diversification by spreading the risks. You will find that now the risk portfolios that insurance companies hold, that they are quite uh, diversified. And at the same time for the individual customers, we are able to let them have a peace of mind by transferring their risk to the insurance companies. So to the customer, they, we provide value uh, by providing information on prevailing risks and uncertainties and how to protect oneself, determination of equitable premium to cover the prevailing risks, and timely recovery from unprecedented risks and uncertainties through the payment of claims. If you look at uh, the growth of insurance company in Kenya, as uh, what I've presented to you, you'll see that the insurance premiums have been growing steadily over the years. And uh, insurance contributes to a less, less than 10% of the GDP. So the penetration rate within the industry, in the, the economy is quite low, even though the growth is significant. And this shows that the amounts that are being mentioned, they are quite influential towards how insurance should be treated towards building an effective ecosystem because we do have the consumers who buy premium and they need an infrastructure that is efficient. We know that now, like in Kenya, we do have people paying premiums through mobile. We have people who pay through bank transfers. We have the checks, the cash, but this, if we look at the current situation, we cannot rely on just simple uh, cash and payment method which, we can, as we see, the challenges that are arising from that. We've seen that the industry is heavily reliant on motor and uh, medical. And if you look at from this presentation, you can see that one of the measure of uh, performance of an insurance industry is the loss ratio. So if you look at the size of the circle, it tells you the size of the premiums collected. 
So if, if you look at the general insurance industry, most of the premiums collected are within the medical and the and you can see that the growth rate, the annual compounded growth rate within the medical is quite high. So this medical is appearing to be the highest attraction because it relates very well to the consumer. And if you come to the motto private, uh, the motor insurance has a high uh, attraction because it is highly regulated where you cannot have a vehicle without insurance. And this, We've seen that with the increasing demand for vehicles in the, in the economy, that has contributed to that high growth. We have other products that are low in uh, risk, but the attraction to them are quite low. So you can see the premiums which are being attributed to these low risk products are quite low. And this, you can say that we can now start looking at how do we grow new products around these low risk products and penetrate them into the market and have profitable industry within insurance? So the challenges that are there within the insurance industry in Kenya is that particularly in 2020, we've seen reduced premiums. These are attributed to, for example, uh, we have staff workforce reductions We've had uh, with that workforce reduction, reduction in premiums uh, and withdrawals of uh, investments. We've seen compliance to various regulations tightening and there's a demand for IFRS and the Data Protection Act. And the rollouts of these projects are being impacted by with having staff working from home and you could do not have highly specialized resources coming from other geographies to come and support in the project, uh, product rollout. There is increase in fraud and waste within the insurance value chain from distributors, service providers, and internal staff. And here, the waste element is what you'll find is coming out to be a strong issue in that if you look at of late, the visits to hospitals have reduced and the claims attributed to motor have, been, have reduced due to reduced movement. And the waste within the medical is that when you go to a hospital, you'll find the doctor will prescribe all form of tests to the patient, yet those tests are not necessary. That's why we are calling waste. And when it comes to vehicle repairs, you'll find the garage will prescribe parts which they'll not put into the vehicle. So they exaggerate the accident so that they can get uh, to find some parts which will not be put into the vehicle. There's predominance of traditional distribution channels that have high influence on consumer choices and, and uh, contribute to 89% of the GWP. So in insurance, we find that most of the business is through agents and brokers. And from the data we have on Kenya, 89% of the premiums collected came from the agents and the brokers. But the adverse effect to this is that 89% of the outstanding premium not collected, that is to the insurance company. The premium has been collected from the customer. The agent or broker is holding that premium, but they are not remitting it to the insurance company. So that's a big issue that is impacting the insurance industry in Kenya. We've had business disruptions and, relate, and related shift to work and remote working in order to, com, to be compliant to health protocols. This has led to low productivity and redundant workforce. And also what it has made is that we need services to continue, but the services have been disrupted because of staff working from home. The other issue we have is that the technologies have been deployed through VPN, staff working from home, and promise processing technologies that are in the office or some deployed through cloud, but the controls around it need to be reinforced. And this is what we are now saying it contributes to cybersecurity and, and there's also failure to optimize existing technologies so that to promote uh, faster development within the insurance industry. 
the shift in value proposition for consumers of insurance from a generalized uh, representation to a unique uh, representation of risk uh, individual. I'll pick a classic example. You'll find a, a staff who, or somebody who works in an office, he works in the back office, and he has a colleague who is in the sales uh, function. They live in the same neighborhood and they work in the same uh, premises. So this staff, the two staffs will travel to the office. After the salesperson, once he reaches the office, he has to make business relationship uh, visits to clients. So during the day, he'll be out on the road. But if, the, if you look at the premiums that they are paid for the same type of vehicle, it's the same. But the person who is on the road has a higher risk. So there is now the demand for having, I need my unique risk different from the other person, and I need that risk to be adequately priced. Insurers are remaining in traditional business classes. And this is where you now come and see that if you look at the nature of the businesses that we have, the, in, the businesses are now in their uh, balance sheet, they have more of intangible assets than tangible assets. So if you look at data from 1975 to 2018 globally, picking the intangible assets of S&P 500 companies, you'll find that what is growing exponentially is the intangible assets. And this we are looking at things to do with uh, where you have the royalties, you have issue to do with the, the, the brand, all these, how can they be valued? And then be able to insure it so that you can generate a premium that is more and greater than the physical as the, the tangible assets that we are familiar with. So with this, we've seen that when you have all these new developments, there's need for rollouts of efficient technologies. So I'll pick a classic example, what we've done in resolution. We've deployed various technologies and these are geared towards embedding efficient payment infrastructures. So we have linked to hospitals, we have been linked to pharmacies, we've been linked to laboratories, and we've been linked to banks. We have been linked to uh, end user clients. So through the digital platforms, we've been able to have them pay through mobile. We have now ability to pay the insurance, the hospitals directly through efficient RTGS and DFT models. But the, what we are now saying is that if within the payment infrastructure, we need this to be de defined in such a way that the payment methods are classified and categorized efficiently so that we are able to measure what is the value of these payments that are being transferred between insurance company and the various service providers and end consumers. And this will be able to bring about attraction towards what is it that we need to do so that our consumers can move that penetration rate which we are seeing to be less than 10% to a close to what we have in South Africa and other developed countries, greater than 15%. If you look at in the motor industry, we've already been able to connect. And now things that we've been able to digitize is that we've connect, been able to have digital motor vehicle certificates. We've been able to have ability to now connect to garages and be able to see what are those parts that are being put in the vehicles. Now, as the parts have been factored in, we're able to now link to suppliers and get to know what is the actual price of that supply of that item. If you compare the concept of what we are looking at in insurance, it's similar to what we have in, in the banking system and the trade finance processes, because you have all the parties connected and the payment is so efficient and you'll have what we now even can factor invoice discounting within the insurance payment infrastructure. And, and that's the proposition that we are saying, once we have these 360 linkages and a, and a defined ecosystem, we shall be able to have cheaper insurance options, which will be able to attract more clients. And at the same time, with the digitization of all this information, 
we shall be able to eliminate the fraud that we see within the insurance industry. It is said in Kenya that 30% of the claims paid are fraudulent. And that's why we are now looking at how can we be able to embed this payment infrastructure so that we are able to have efficient data that can be able to detect early alerts on fraud. So in conclusion, we are now saying that uh, to be able to have that efficient payment infrastructure within insurance, we need to have new models and personalized products. This is by digitizing small commercial insurance services, getting value from the digital journey maps so that we get to know what is it that the customer needs at the various uh, stages of his uh, uh, service experience. Change the broker and distribution models so that we're able to have more of self-servicing, embedding insurance in the payment infrastructure. And uh, one of the key things we picked was, for example, nowadays when you buy a Samsung product, you'll find that you are able to buy the warranty product process to onboard the warranty through digital. So within that warranty process, why can't insurance be embedded so that you can have what we call pay as you go? As you buy a service, you have an element of insurance already captured within it. We have AI, robotics, machine learning, and automation of faster processing at onboarding and registration and claims adjudication. We have advanced analytics and proactiveness for improving the customer experience with data analytics. We are driving change through InsureTech partnership. If you look at to, for the insurance companies to be highly advanced, we need to have partnership with the InsureTechs so that they can have that innovation coming in and not uh, reinventing every technology in-house, but through people who have already uh, rolled out such similar rollouts in other areas. We are looking at scenario planning becoming more complex to manage risk. That is, we are looking at model risk management 2.0. Business continuity and resilience planning will become a critical focus. This remote working will become much more widespread. That is, uh, you'll have to be tracking productivity, data security with remote working. And more, we are looking at mainstreaming blockchain to manage fraud and waste. Uh, thank you very much and uh, open to questions and answers. Thank you, uh, Thomas, that was amazing. And, and most importantly, I like how you stuck to the schedule. That's something uh, very, very few speakers do given uh, the amount of knowledge we possess and you know the the sharing uh, capabilities well uh interestingly uh i'm i'm i i don't see any questions up here which means people have uh, very well received uh the, the speech and uh, therefore uh i would like to thank you for presenting should i receive any questions i will be very happy to uh, forward them your way mostly on an email or uh, I will introduce you the person uh, asking the question. Moving on, uh, 